duplexes today, and I am putting in some of these edge glued pine countertops that I make. Um, I buy these blanks at Menards. When I buy them, they're 30 inches wide, and I rip them down to 25 inches wide and use the offcut for the backsplash. So this is kind of what it looks like whenever you're done. Um, they're very inexpensive. This whole um, kitchen costs in, in the wood was about $150. So compared to, I'm not even exactly sure how much for even laminate countertops. So what I'm gonna do today is show you guys how to end up with this. I built a little one here and here, the stove goes between, and I still have to put an eight foot piece one on this side. So it's really muddy outside. Um, the electricity's turned off over here right now. We had uh, dug into the electrical outside, putting in some plumbing. So it's a little bit dark in here, but I'm gonna try my best to show you guys how to come up with this end product. All right, so when you guys go to Menards, um, you wanna kind of look them over when you pick your pieces out because they will sometimes have some pretty big scratches in them if you're not careful. So I try to pick ones that have the least amount of imperfections as possible, and they come fairly smooth. So whenever they come smooth, they really don't take a lot of sanding. I use 220 grit sandpaper, and I just take them down, uh, get them as smooth as I can, any rust spots out. So I'm gonna kinda check over this one and see which side I wanna use. As I cut this board, um, I'll mention the dimensions of the lumber that I got. This is edge glued pine. It's five quarter inches thick, so an inch and a quarter, 30 inches wide, and eight feet long. That's what this piece is. There's all different sizes, but the thickness for countertop that you want is five quarter.
how tall this is five inches. It's just a hair too big for my backsplash. I'm going to rip it down to four and a half inches. Touch up these with the sander. Get a few of the edges. I like the square edges personally, but I like to just buzz them down just a hair so they're not so sharp. Here are the countertops.
you now to polyurethane, these countertops. I have cut the sink out of this one. I didn't video that. Uh, the sink is ready to drop in, but before I put the sink in, I want to make sure I get everything coated with the polyurethane. I'm going to put one coat of polyurethane on the back and the bottom of these countertops just to kind of seal everything in. I don't know if it's necessary, but I like to do that when I do, whenever I um, coat these just to seal it all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and do the back and bottom of each one of these countertops. Then I'll set it in place where it goes. And then I'll put three or four coats on the top. So I'm going to start right now and just get the back and bottom of all of them done. All right, you can kind of see what it looks like after I have put a polyurethane coat on it. See how white the wood is over there? And here, it's quite a bit darker, kind of a yellow. I think I'm going to keep it this way. Um, we're gonna try it. So trying to make a decision just here on the cuff because I want to put two or three coats or three or four coats of polyurethane on this. So I guess this is the color we're going to go with in this unit. I've got 15 more units to do countertops in, um, but I can change it up with different, different colors for different units if I want to. But this is the first one and I thought I'd just try a natural the natural look, so we'll go ahead and get another one done. I just wanted to show you guys these countertops. I've used these multiple times in different houses. They are very inexpensive. After tax, I think all these countertops cost me around $150, not including the polyurethane. But they're an excellent option. They're cheaper than plywood, but they're an excellent option for a house. I think they look nice and they hold up decently. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate you guys watching.